In this module, we're going to work on retopology and UV mapping. The procedure that is going to be demonstrated in these videos is one of many methods that high and low resolution versions can be uh, finally created and UV coordinates set up for an asset. In ZBrush and eventually into Maya, this is one particular way that works pretty effectively and allows you to take advantage of a lot of the lower subdivision levels, a lot of the base mesh that you created with the Z modeler. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a high resolution version of this. We already have the high resolution version, but we're going to create one that's a little bit more practical to use as a 3D reference when we bring it into Maya. You know, we're dealing with 8.7 million points right now. Although that level of subdivision is useful when you're doing sculpting, it's not really that useful when it comes to bringing it into Maya to use as a 3D reference. We're going to use the Decimation Master in order to get a more efficient version of this. The Decimation Master will create a lower resolution version while preserving a lot of the form transitions and surface details that we've created. So the first thing I would like to do is go into my latest project and look at all of the subtools that I have constructed at this point. And as far as the body goes, this uh, Boolean dynameshed version of the body is going to work just fine. So what we're going to do is merge these together. Uh, so make sure that you only have subtools that are going to be used for the high resolution version and you can delete all the other ones out of your subtool menu. Make sure that each of them are also at their highest subdivision level. And that may be five, it may be six. Um, if you subdivided things upwards to five or six using dynamic subdivision, you should be in good shape. Uh, the screws were only subdivided to four. The actual Boolean and dynameshed body with those struts added is not going to have uh, any subdivisions because it's been booleaned and dynameshed. So at their highest subdivision level we want to go into Z plugin, go to the subtool master, and merge all the visible subtools. If something is invisible it won't merge so you'll be in good shape. We can preserve the existing polygroups just in the event that we need them. Uh, we're not going to delete any of the extra subtools. Keep in mind that this can't be undone, so make sure you have a copy of this saved. Press OK. At the end of our list, a completely merged version. Uh, let's go ahead and shift and make everything invisible and then just turn on the merge subtool that we have. So if you're satisfied with the results of your high resolution merge into a single subtool, let's just go ahead and delete everything else that isn't in there. So delete other, and I've just got the single subtool in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this particular subtool out. I don't really need to save my Z project, but I'm going to save the subtool out. Okay, next we're going to use Decimation Master. It's in your Z plugin menu. Uh, if you wanted to configure your user interface to add it to a custom menu or bring the Z plugin menu over to a different tray, you may. Um, I'm just going to use it right here. We're going to go under Decimation Master and take a look at the menu. Uh, I'm going to set this to 50, so it's going to try to decimate it down to 50% of the number that's active right now, which for me is 8.6 million. In order to do that, you need to pre-process it. We're going to pre-process current, and this should take a little bit of time, so let uh, ZBrush process the topology. And during this process, Decimation Masker is simply analyzing the mesh, calculating you know, the topology, the transitions, the details, uh, and then saving something to disk. 
temporarily to uh, have its calculations uh, intact. So go back into Decimation Master, set it to 50%, and go ahead and decimate the current, and let ZBrush do the work. When it's all done, you should get a single subtool that has been triangulated, and you'll notice that it is still incredibly dense, especially uh, along our dynameshed surfaces. Uh, but you'll begin to notice something, is that a lot of the detail is going to be concentrated around form transitions. Uh, along smoother surface transitions, it's not going to be as detailed. It's not important that we've lost subtools and things like that at this point, because this is simply going to be used as a reference in Maya that we can form our contours and our boundaries on our low poly to this. So you can see that the point count has gone down by 50%. And what you need to do now is go ahead and duplicate this. Turn off the old one. Make sure you're active on the new one. And then repeat this process. And you're going to repeat this process a few times until you get down to about 250,000 points uh, for this particular object. And take it down to there and make a comparison against the surface details at 8 million and the surface details at 250,000. So we're pre-processing this new mesh and then we're going to decimate it. And we're going to do it several times over until we get down under a million points. Once it's processed, go ahead and decimate the current. It brings it down to 2.1 million. And if we turn the polyframe off, at 2.1 million, we still preserve many of the surface details transitions. So you begin to realize it's not as necessary to have something at such a high level of resolution when you're doing hard surface modeling. It is necessary when you're sculpting, you know, making sure that you're beveled surfaces, when you're doing a lot of these little sculpted beads that we did. Decimation Master is concentrating detail in those areas in terms of topology. So now we've got this down to 541,000 points. Your count is most likely going to be different, but it shouldn't be too far off. And even though it's been triangulated and you can move close up to some of these surface transitions and see that there are some really, really elongated triangles. It's still focusing the information around those edge transitions. I'm going to bring it down one more level because there really isn't any sculpted detail that we're going to lose. And here it is at 270,000 points. still holds up with its bevels. Surface smoothness is still there. and still effective, but much easier to use in Maya, because Maya really wasn't developed to push around millions of points on an object. But 270,000 points, a little bit more practical, a little bit more easy to use as we make it into a live surface and use it as the basis for our low poly topology. So once you have this all together, definitely save your Z tool out over here with the Save As option. It's not as necessary to save your Z projects out anymore. In the next video, we're going to demonstrate how to get together your low resolution objects for the base mesh of this Nuka Grenade.